niggas talking shit, yeah, they bread stank Walk up in the club, dripping like I'm fresh paint I can see through the facade like an x-ray, let me What's going on, fight fans? It's another great day when you love MMA Welcome back to Mad Maddie Fight Talk, episode 8 We're getting deeper and deeper into this one, baby Today is a groundbreaking day We are doing an interview for the very first time uh, It's one of my favorite fighters from Hawaii this dude is a straight beast on the ground. He represents the Puna Ground and Pound, baby. His name is Shaden Lealoha. Let's welcome him to the show. What's going on, Shaden Steadfast Lealoha? My first interview, man. I'm fucking hyped, for real. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Thank you for having me on, brother. You're, uh, you got a big fight coming up, man. April 30th against Edwin Chavez. He's 4-0. He's on a 10-fight win streak. You know, how have you been preparing for this guy, man? Um, preparation has, has been the same year round, you know, we're just kind of waiting for a name, a um, few names that fell through, so we, we just stayed ready, you know, and management, uh, Matt Iridium told me stay ready for maybe around the three week notice, so, you know, when we finally got a name and locked it in, we were stoked because we were ready this whole time. You know... Uh, that actually makes me wonder, you know, I always wonder this about other guys because I, I personally, dude, I have to see who I'm fighting, man. Like, I try to look up everything about them. Are you the same way or do you kind of just, do you just like, you know, go into the fight and you're like, bro, I'm ready for whatever. You know, like, I know there's a lot of guys like that, but I'm not like that. I was so curious if that's how you are. Yeah, well, I, I like to have an idea uh, with my opponents and, um, you know, a lot of times when I don't like to watch it too much. I just focus on what I do best, but yeah, we definitely, you know, watch, watch some tape and, and when I feel like we, we got it down, um, there's no need to really uh, watch them too much and, and obsess over it. Has the pandemic really like fucked your training up or is it like, you know, is everything kind of normal? Cause I know you do train with Max Holloway, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I mean, he said he doesn't even really spar anymore. I was just curious, you know, has that affected you guys with grappling or like do you guys still get together and do stuff? <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think back when Max was getting ready for his first camp, we were like in one of the first tiers in Hawaii. So it, it was locked down, but we we're kind of improvising like by pod training and you know having a few training partners that were honest and you know um, getting checked up on if they feel sick and just stuff like that. <clears throat> so less chance of catching COVID. I felt like for the most part we were able to make adjustments uh, during the pandemic, and eventually we got to tier two and um, where we could where we could all just start training together again so like as of right now it is it's just like how it was before the pandemic so that's been nice you know i did a little research on this guy man he's four and oh he's on a 10 fight win streak but you know four and oh as a pro and you're seven and two as a pro i mean you bring a lot of experience into this fight you have a vicious style bro like when you get on top of guys they literally they literally look like they want to quit and they just looking for a way out i mean are you gonna bring the similar uh pgp ground and pound or you know what's like what are you thinking about this guy like what do you want to what is your game plan and are you excited to give him his first loss yeah uh, so yeah I'm, I'm super excited i know that uh I have experience going into this, you know, I've, I've been in there with um, guys that are in the UFC, I've been on a main card on a huge promotion, like Bellator Hawaii, um, so yeah, I just got to go out there and execute and do what I do best, you know, and not get cute, you know, just stick to my stick to my game plan and, and um, do what I know I can do and what everybody else knows I can do, you know, it's just, it's up to, honestly, it's just up to me. To go out there and perform. I'm excited to give this guy <clears throat> his first loss because um, I feel like he hasn't fought really any any tough competition yet. Um, I'm sure he knows that I'm a step up in competition for him. You know, and I remember being a young buck coming out. You know, maybe uh, I think I was on a like six fight win streak, six and zero, oh, and you do have that question of like how, you know, how will I do like on the next level when when I really get tested against a veteran. So. You know, it's actually a good experience for both of us, you know, if <clears throat> I get a win over someone undefeated, you know what I mean, and good chance for me, if I feel like I belong in the UFC, then I should be able to beat him. I should be able to beat someone like him if I feel like I belong there. That is a good point, bro. 
you have championship experience, like you are actually a champion in X1. You're the bantamweight champion over there, or you ha you held the title, and you've, you know, you've faced high level competition, like you were saying. You know, does that championship experience uh, and the mental preparation? Do you feel like that gives you like a, a way more advantage? Are you able to calm your mind in the in tougher situations since you've had the title experience? Yeah, and um, you know more so than even the title experience. I, I feel like uh, you know this shows like the contender and, and feeling feeling how it is to be under those lights and even with the Bellator main card. You know that was that was big and <clears throat> what people don't understand is like you know there's there's these um, these jitters that everybody deals with as an athlete going into that and if you're not used to it, you know what I mean. Like experience is the best teacher and. Um, that's what I learned from those experiences, and you know, now especially now having having those um, under my belt, like I just really, really feel like it's it's my time. People who don't get the full experience, man, it's really hard for them to understand like what the pressure's like when you're in, when you're in the ring and like everybody's watching you. I mean, it's like little things like that that add up. Where did the burning passion from fighting it come from anyway? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where did this all start? Like, you're, you've been able to succeed and go so far so quickly, man. It's really impressive to watch you just level up and level up. So I'm like, where did, where did this fire come from? Shoot, honestly, um, I felt like uh, I was always interested in MMA, but when the thing that really made me go full screen was... Uh, you know, I was on a I was on a path to to being like a knucklehead, and I felt like this career, my fighting career, was like a second chance from God to just straighten out my life and and stay on a a, a good path, you know, and, and stay out of trouble, but just be a good person, you know. That that's above all, like that's that's really what I'm striving for, you know, is be a good person in and out of the in and out of the cage, you know what I mean, like. Not just be a good fighter, but be good in all areas of my life. When people get so famous, they forget that you have a whole crowd of people that look up to you. Even now, you got people that are looking up to you already. Like, you know, I want to be like Shaden, and you do want to set that tone for them, right? Like, so I agree with what you're saying, basically, in the long run. This next fight is going to be in Oklahoma. So I actually, I'm super curious, man. When you come from Hawaii, you know, it's a very competitive place. But when you, when you go to the mainland to fight, do you feel any extra pressure or extra stress you got to represent hawaii extra hard or does any of that play into your mind or do you use any of that to motivate you well yeah like um i actually think it's it's more pressure when you're fighting at home you know you got your friends and family around you all fight week and and um you know you know everybody's coming out and gonna come watch you live like uh i feel like i like fight fighting in the mainland because you know you get away and you might be away from your family for a bit, but you know it's because there's a job we gotta handle. So I mean, it's you know it's like a it's like a business trip. Yeah, I'm, I'm just more excited than anything to, to get back in there. You know, it's been maybe maybe a year since I I fought and not by choice. You know, it's, this pandemic was holding us up and uh, we had we had guys agreeing to fights and then pulling out. <clears throat> but I've been staying ready regardless. Year round, the year round hard work is really what's gonna make a difference. And you work hard, so I'm not even worried about that. What's up, easy boy? Gotta put this guy's show on, man. This guy's into uh, Poco Melon. That's, what, that's another thing, too, bro. I'm a um, full time dad. From being a guy, I feel like um, I got a lot more patience. You get a lot more patient, and um, you know the way. I, what I'd always try to tell myself, especially in the beginning, you know, when you're all small and stuff, is like I'm working on my patience and my composure. You know, because with the little ones, like they don't understand, and sometimes uh, they can be overwhelming. But at the same time, the the blessing outweighs the the work that it takes. You know. I think it's kind of cool that when you when you have a kid or you know I'm I'm able to have kids around like my ne my nieces and nephews like dude you constantly get to teach them like this is the best way to do it I feel like that's a cool ass thing about being a parent. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, everything that you show them, it's like their first experience. 
So they're like soaking everything in, and you get to give that to them. So like, you know, we're we're blessed. What what age do you get your child into MMA? Dude, um, that's one of those things where I feel like as a dad, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to force them to want to compete just because your dad does it and stuff like that. That's dude. The rule is you gotta do one combat sport, whether it's wrestling, jujitsu, kickboxing, or something. Like yeah, you gotta be bulletproof. Exactly. I I agree with that. Exactly. You know, like um, I feel like. In Fighting, especially like it's, it's not like these other sports. You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, yeah, I was a basketball player, and you know, you got good basketball genetics. Like you should definitely do it. Like it's one of those things. That I feel like they should pick it up on their own if they're interested in it. And then just support them, man, and make them a beast in it, right? Exactly. He's picking up on some things. You know, it looks like he wants to be a basketballer, so I don't mind that. If he wants to play basketball during wrestling season. You know, yeah. I, I much rather him wrestle. <laughs> if he chooses that path, then I'll support him 100%. Oh, dude. See, this is the beautiful side about, like, doing these interviews, man, is that people get to see, like, that you guys are real people. They're just so used to seeing the violence and, like, oh, man, this guy's crazy. He wants to knock everybody out. He wants to hurt people. But at the end of the day, bro, you guys are, like, parents. You know what I mean? You guys got families. Yeah. It's cool to hear this side of a, a, a ground and pound artist. Bro, in a picture perfect world, where does Shaden Lealoa's career go from here? You want to be a champion in multiple organizations? Like, what are you trying to do? I, I want to be a world champion. You know what I mean? I want to um, get into the UFC. That's, that's, what, that's what I dreamt about since I was like eight years old. You know, I, I remember being, being shy about, about my goals. You know what I mean? And then, that's that's my goals, man. I, I want to eventually get in the UFC, and I know that I belong there. I know my abilities. You know, like um, I have a bunch of teammates that <clears throat> give me reassurance, and you know, my time is just coming. It's a matter of time, and, and I'm I'm in no rush. At the same time, I'm I'm not in a rush because I just I keep getting better. You know, I'm. It's not like I'm I'm 27 years old, so it's like I, you know maybe barely in my prime. So, and, and I still feel like I have a lot to learn, you know, uh, I'm not stressed out, I'm not stressed out trying to force myself to get it quick. There's a lot of, a lot of amateur guys I noticed, like, I only got to fight amateur, bro, and I was two and four. Pressure was way more than I thought it would be. We put this, like, weird pressure on ourselves, like, how do you seriously, like, deal with that? Like, is there a mental prep thing, or you just tune it all out? Yeah, well, I just try to turn that those nerves that everybody has in, into excitement just remind myself that i love doing this i choose to do this and and that i'm excited and i'm prepared and um that ultimately god's in control in this before it even happened so you know that my family loves me regardless and um that that's all you know there's we can't control everything we can control what we do in there but you know leading up if you're gonna if you're gonna keep dwelling on on things then i i feel like that's how the anxiety heightens for a lot of guys that's the cool thing about fighting too is even on a pro level until you get to the wins and you see this guy and you look him in his eyes you know that's when you really find out like oh shit this guy's not really about it so it's kind of cool the mental aspect of being able to break people before you even fight them i think that's amazing oh yeah yeah there's uh yeah there's there's guys that definitely break before the fight even happens but so there's some guys where well i knew that they're in for a t we're in for a tough one you know because <clears throat> just the energy that they brought, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, like, I see that this guy doesn't quit. Like, I feel like that makes you like a way tougher fighter than like somebody you know that that has quit, you know? You see a lot of guys, man. I feel like <clears throat> there's even some guys on the big shows that are quitters, you know what I mean? These guys gotta make room for, for the guys that, that, that are willing to go all the way. I don't want to hold you up too long, man. I know you're a full-time dad, so I, I, if you could give one piece of advice, what would you tell kids who are looking up to you right now. How do I get to the LFA, man? How do I get on all these promotions? Like you're, you know, you're fighting all over the place. You know, being from Hawaii myself, I knew it was hard to get out of that small town mindset and be able to expose myself. What would you tell these kids, man? Like what, what would be your advice to them? Shoot, my advice to them would be to just <clears throat> work hard and, and um, surround yourself with some good people and then not, you know, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. At the end of the day, you just keep on because at the, 
at the end of the day, no, what is opinion is, is gonna matter over your life, you know what I mean? So you might as well do do what you want, want because people are gonna have their opinions anyways. I respect that. I, I, I love that attitude, man. <laughs> yeah, Bro, yeah. I really, I just want to say thank you for giving me the time to do this interview, you bro. I sincerely love watching you fight. I'm not, I love all your fights. The, your style is vicious. Guys, if you've never seen Shaden fight, man, hit him up on YouTube, look him up on Google. You need, the guy's nasty ground and pound, amazing wrestling. Like, give this guy the love he needs. If you're from Hawaii, bro, you guys better be tuning in April 30th to watch him beat the brakes off of Edwin Chavez. That guy has no fucking clue what's coming. Man, thank you, seriously. Hey, thank you, Matt, for having me, bro. Anytime, anytime, man. I appreciate you. Oh, I look forward to future interviews with you, bro. I'll probably, you know what, man? I'm gonna say it now. We're probably gonna do one after you, after you get the dub. So yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it, man. Haters talking shit, yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club, dripping like I'm fresh paint. I could see through the facade like an x-ray. Let me